Hey there, boys and girls. I, like every other denizen of the cursed lands of the Path of Exile community, have witnessed the distant grumbling of the uh, nerf storm clouds, and either wept or rejoiced at the sight of them. 3.15 seems like it'll live up to the promise of the tweet that went out just a few days before the announcement that assured everyone that there would be a meta shakeup for us all. Uh, I want to start my thoughts on the expedition announcement, however, by briefly touching on the new skills that have been, have been rather showcased, and I do mean briefly, as I'll quickly run down one of the skills that I think has potential, one of the skills that I think will be a flop, and one skill that I personally am most interested in, just to give you guys a nice little teaser. Uh, the most exciting of the new skills to me, starting with the one I'm most interested in personally, has to be Explosive Concoction. Thematically, this skill is just a slam dunk, as you can watch gameplay and immediately understand the concept here. Magical Molotov Cocktails, which is just an incredibly cool concept. Even the prerequisite of being unarmed is really neat and plays in thematically with the skill, though it's kind of a downside for viability, uh, as denying a weapon is a fairly significant penalty to damage scaling for um, spells or attacks, really. That said, you can still use a shield, uh, as it just requires an unarmed status and not unencumbered. Though if you want to go all the way and unencumber yourself as well, you can also go for Hollow Palm. And Facebreaker does work, as Facebreaker doesn't specify a melee skill, just an attack skill, but it is more unarmed physical damage, which means that the flat lightning from a Topaz Flask or the flat cold from a um, Sapphire Flask, that's the one, would not be scaled by it. Though you could do something maybe with Cold Conversion Facebreaker Hatred using a flat cold flask, and maybe there's something there. Cold damage is certainly uh, full of its own benefits, getting some crit going and freezing stuff, though unarmed crit can always be tough. Anyways, don't want to wax on too long about this. Let's move on to the skill that I'm least excited for, and this may surprise some folks, um, but I'm not really sold on behead support. Anything with a Headhunter-esque effect does warrant at least a bit of attention, um, and I've given it said attention, and it's not particularly good on, on further uh, investigation. The damage bonus only kicks in on low life, means, meaning that you are effectively working with a 5-link and maybe a 5-link and a half um, for most of the fight, as low life is now at 50% HP. That is a bit better than it would have been before, but I still don't think it's particularly good. Um, and the unique effect of the support gem works more similarly to an inspired learning than it does a headhunter, stealing only one effect from slain rare monsters. This means that the soul eater that you just killed, desperately hoping to steal away the effect and become as a god for the next 20 seconds, will probably just give you a little bit of life regen, or maybe a bit of res or something. This is the extremely budget version of headhunter, to the point where it doesn't really seem worth even the minimal budget that it's costing you. Finally, the skill that I see as potentially being busted, though don't quote me on this because we are pretty far out from patch notes and stuff, this is speculation, um, is Blade Trap. Though I admit it might not make the best starter skill, given you do ideally need to well-rolled weapons. Uh, that said, it does completely ignore attack speed, so you really only need a big pile of physical or elemental damage from your weapon. Uh, making things like uh, maybe a temple modded dagger or a claw, so you guarantee that one good prefix with a, the Takatl's mod, I think it is, for like 160% fizz and then some gained as extra chaos. Or maybe a unique, something like uh, Mark of the Doubting Knight, which has a decent amount of fizz scaling, but extremely awful attack speed, but the awful attack speed doesn't matter. Uh, those would be decent starters. Uh, I admit I may be biased here, though, as I love the idea of a melee-centric attack trap. Um... And I just love traps in general, but it seems to me that stacking these things on a boss and shredding them to bits could be a really fun time. Though I suppose we'll have to see how the clear looks, given that the AoE of the traps in the reveal trailer was not huge. But eh, trappers have always been a little more single target focused than clear. Ignore lightning traps existence. Uh, now, for the meat of the thing. The low down, dirty, underhanded, mega nuketastic nerfs. What do I think of them? They're probably fine. Um, I, I don't have all the numbers as yet on what particular is getting what sort of nerf, obviously, but Path of Exile has such incredible depth and complexity of choice that I sincerely doubt there won't be some sort of game-crushing meta build within a week or two of launch. I really hope that said game-crushing meta build will be a different flavor than what we've had before recently, 
And I think that nerfs to a lot of the prevalent choices is a fine way of approaching that initially. Digging into some more specifics though, and you'll note I'm looking over to the side here, I, I wanted to get my thoughts precise on this so I am reading off a script. Uh, I don't think that nerfs to damage values on generic damage supports, like the upcoming change to control destruction that they talked about in the video, where they're making it a multiplicative reduction to crit chance instead of a, um, I guess, additive. Feels like the wrong word when you're talking about lowering a value, but an additive or subtractive change. Anyways, um, that aside. Well, I don't think those changes will be enough in their own to mitigate players simply stacking damage supports still. Uh, each individual damage as each individual source of damage becomes less effective, I think players might merely scrounge for damage more and more greedily, and be even less willing to give up that generic more multi-support in favor of something with a bit more flavor on it. Ideally, this change would also come packaged with some buffs to things like Fork, or Life Leech support, or Life Gain on Head, or Blind, or any of the dozen other support gems with nothing to offer but utility or skill behavior changes. I think in absence of those kinds of buffs, you're simply going to see a reduction in power across the board, which admittedly might be something GGG is looking for, I believe that's the case, but not really that much of a change up in terms of what's being played, it's just now the things being played are 20% weaker. It's the same things, but they're 20% weaker. I think that's the pitfall we might be stumbling into here, but again, we'll need to see specifics. The other thing, big, to big thing to touch on is the flask changes incoming. And on these specifically, I am more trepidatious than the gem changes. Uh, while I certainly agree with each and every flaw pointed out by Chris during the uh, announcement podcast, not podcast, announcement broadcast, um, when underlining the reasons for the change, I don't personally agree that the changes being implemented will address them thoroughly enough. Uh, and there will be some collateral damage that might be unpleasant for the game in the long run. Things like tying utility options for flasks to specific currencies, for instance, I'm not particularly in favor of. That seems rife for annoyance and potentially for, I don't know, just locking utility behind a currency that you may not even end up getting, particularly in something like a Soul Cell found run, though to be fair, they don't balance around that. I, I don't see the reasoning here. Um, I would prefer, I think, to see triggerable flask options be simply a choice you make in an options menu, uh, or maybe as a flask affix if it does need to be tied to something in game, a prefix or something like that. Um, it is possible that the introduction of another currency is being made specifically to avoid taking up affixes on flasks, as they don't want to create opportunity costs there, where you're deciding, ooh, do I want to have adrenaline in my Quicksilver flask, or do I want it to trigger instantly when X situation happens? Um, but even with that opportunity cost, I do think it would be preferable over having an entirely separate currency system. Um, Tarky actually suggested something great in his video where you could have something on the crafting bench where you feed the crafting bench whatever orb it is and instead of giving you a random result, it gives you a list of different results and you choose which one you want. So instead of using the orb and randomly getting either shock of, um, or sorry, trigger when shocked or trigger when chilled, you, or trigger when stunned at random one of those, you would just use the orb on your crafting bench and choose the one that's relevant to your situation. Even that would be a step in the right direction, but I personally don't even like the idea of a currency being tied to these things at all. Um, I think that this change is going to be the one that's going to impact the feel of moment-to-moment -moment mapping the most, the flash change overall. I dig, dig into the currency there a little bit. Um, so it will most likely be the most divisive of all the changes uh, in a league that I already anticipate will leave folks divided. But I did want to keep this video fairly short, so even though there's a lot more to be said, a lot of it will likely be better said when we have more specifics to come through. So I'll bring it to a close for now. I'm very excited for the changes coming in 3.15 though, I do want to emphasize that, and excited for a bunch of the new skills. Um, I'm just cautiously awaiting the impact of the flask and skill gem changes as this is being sold to us as one of the bigger changes in recent history for Path of Exile. So, we'll see how it plays out. Until next time, thank you for watching, and have a good night.